In his journey to understand how we all came to be on earth, Charles Darwin made frequent trips to the Galapagos Islands, which are a set of islands on the Pacific Ocean. There he studied all the endemic or the native species of flora and fauna present and that is what led to him proposing his theory of natural selection and evolution. When he was studying the species on these islands, of particular interest to him were these set of species known as finches. Now finches are actually birds and Darwin noticed that there were several species of finches on these islands and when he studied them further he understood that they all seem to have evolved from a common ancestral finch that led to the proposition of the idea known as adaptive radiation now what is adaptive radiation and how did these finches help in figuring out adaptive radiation that's what we're going to learn in today's video these finches are now called Darwin's finches in honor of Charles Darwin. But how exactly did they play a role in this adaptive radiation? So what Charles Darwin observed in the Galapagos Islands is that these finches seem to have evolved from a common ancestral finch and that they moved over or they became geographically isolated at different parts of the island because Galapagos Islands is an archipelago which means there is a set of islands and each island is unique in terms of the environment it has. So he noticed that the finches had all evolved from a common ancestral finch and had phenotypic characters according to the environment in which they evolved in. For example, insect eating finches had long thin beaks that were needed to pick up insects from the ground and eat. Seed eating finches had a flat and pointy beak that was needed to break open the seeds. So he noticed that the different type of beak shape, the feather color, all that depended on the environment in which these finches evolved in. That is what is adaptive radiation, which means that the species literally radiated out of a single ancestral stock and they each became their unique species due to geographic isolation and sexual isolation, which means that these two species, the insect eating finches and the woodpecker types insect eating finches, they were geographically isolated for a long time, which gave them enough time to evolve into their own species. They didn't have much of interaction between them to allow for any a cross of genes between these two species. The species literally radiated out from a common species that is what is known as adaptive radiation. They all adapted to their own environments and radiated to form different species. But how exactly does this work? How does adaptive radiation work? Adaptive radiation works because of the formation of new ecological opportunities. I told you, right, the Galapagos is a set of islands. So when birds, the ancestral finches, when they migrated from one island to another, they were faced with new ecological opportunities in the new islands. Examples of ecological opportunities include the loss of predators and occupying of new environments. So when these finches flew from one island to another, the new island that they are occupying in will have an entirely different conditions compared to their previous home. And this new island may also not have any predators that they usually faced in their old habitat. This would lead to a specific set of characters being selected and would lead to adaptation to the new environment in which these species are now living in. Other types of formation of new environments could be like a volcanic eruption. Now how does volcanic eruption cause a new environment to be formed? A lot of islands that have formed these days are actually because of volcanic eruptions. The lava which falls on the ocean eventually cools down and leads to the formation of new environments. Similarly, when a volcanic eruption takes place, a crater may be formed and in that crater a lake may be formed. All these are examples of how new environments can be formed which can then be occupied by a set of species. The thing about adaptive radiation is that it occurs rapidly compared to general evolution which means that the ancestral stock evolves rapidly, radiates rapidly into new species very quickly. So this means there is a recent ancestry between the different species in terms of geological time. Now when I talk about recent ancestry, don't think that it means like 20 years or 30 years before. It is like tens of thousands of millions of years. But still, when you think of the geological time clock, the ancestry is still recent compared to other forms of evolution. 
So here's a closer look at how adaptive radiation could have occurred in the Galapagos Islands. So these are the islands, right? Say this is island A. So there is an ancestral stock of finches living in island A. Some of those species flew from A to this island. Say this is B. And here the environment is very different from A. So the finches that landed on B, they decide to stay there because they prefer that environment compared to A. So A and B are now geographically isolated. Whatever is left of the finches here in A, that evolves separately. And whatever has landed on B here, that evolves separately. Now a group of population say from A itself decides to fly to this island here, C. So again, the population that has moved here to C, this will evolve independently from A and B. This is what leads to adaptive radiation. Each of the species are evolving independently, but they have all evolved from a common ancestral stock. This is why this type of adaptive radiation is also a type of divergent evolution, which means the organisms evolved from a common ancestor. But there are examples of adaptive radiation that are convergent as well. Now, convergent evolution is the opposite of divergent evolution, right? Which means that the organisms didn't exactly have a common ancestor, but they share similar phenotypic characters. What is that example of adaptive radiation, which is a type of convergent evolution? That is the Australian marsupials. Now, what are these marsupials? Marsupials are a type of mammals, but in these animals, the babies, the young ones are born in a very underdeveloped stage and they usually stay in a pouch-like structure inside their mother until they're old enough to survive on their own. Examples of marsupials include kangaroos and a lot of these marsupials are endemic to Australia. Now, how did that happen? So, a long time ago, like during the Triassic period, like 200 million years ago, the earth was very different from what it is now. There were two huge supercontinents. One was Laurasia and the other was Gondwana. So what is present day Australia was actually part of Gondwana. Australia and Antarctica were part of Gondwana. Slowly, slowly, slowly over the years, Australia broke off from this large continent and started moving away. So a set of population decided to stay back in Gondwana itself. So this is actually Africa and this is South America. So some set of species decided to stay back in this part of Gondwana itself when some decided to move with Australia and Antarctica and move away from this large supercontinent. So this led to these species evolving independently of one another in completely different environments but they still shared a lot of common characters because of the environment in which they lived in, specifically the Australian continent. Because all these organisms evolved together in the same environment within the Australian continent, all marsupials exhibit similar shared characteristics. Even though they do not share common ancestry, all marsupials share common characteristics because they evolved together in Australia itself. So this type of evolution that led to the radiative evolution of marsupials in Australia is also an example of adaptive radiation, but where it is convergent and not divergent. When you compare the mammals that live in Australia to the marsupials also, there is a lot of similarities. So some mammals also would have moved along with Australia when the continent was separating, right? For example, you have the mole. This mole is like a burrowing animal. And it shares a lot of common characteristics with the marsupial mole. So all the mammals have, you can say, corresponding marsupial species in the Australian subcontinent because they all evolved together in the same environment. So they share common characteristics like the wolf is a mammal and the marsupial in Australia correspondingly is known as the Tasmanian wolf. So these are examples of adaptive radiation and adaptive radiation, like I said, works in a very rapid manner compared to other forms of evolution and leads to the rapid diversification of new species from a common ancestor.